All right, it is video analysis time, and here we have sort of a repeat video analysis. This is, I believe um, you pronounce it Imain. So this is Imain, and um, we're going to take a look. Now, um, about four or five weeks ago, we did a video analysis on this same exact thrower, and there were a couple things. I'll put a link to that down in the dis description box below. Um, but basically, there were a couple of things that we needed to work on. The big issue was the power position where the feet were lined up um, in the power position and that that was preventing um, getting the hips all the way around and we had a lot of right sector fouls. So as always, we're going to take a look here. I'm going to mute this and we're going to take a look through um, the full throw and full speed a couple times just to see what's happening here. So, right off the bat, you can tell there's something going on with that release. She kind of falls on that release a little bit. That looks like she's almost falling backwards or falling off to the side. Let's check it out again. There you go. This is all the same throw. Let's look at it one more time. Kind of looks like, kind of looks like she slips out of the back, and it looks like she kind of falls at the front. So we're going to take a look here and see what's going on. Now, I've already gone over this and, and made some notes and things like that, but let's take a look and see what's going on here. So, really like the pullback. I mean, I think I said this in the last video, too. I love how you're able to get that discus all the way back and get in a great position. And in the last video, I believe I had mentioned, I haven't watched the video in a while, but I believe I had mentioned how you were entering into the circle a little bit late. So, let's see when you go to enter in that circle. You do a good job getting around your left, and at this point, we need to start running down, the, down that 5 o'clock line. So if you imagine you're in a clock, 6 o'clock is right down the middle, 5 o'clock is over here, kind of down that left sector line, 7 o'clock is the right sector line. So we want to start running. See how your foot and your knee and your upper body is kind of getting there is already going down that left sector line. So at this point, let's run. Let's explode out of the back, just like a sprinter coming out of starting blocks. Let's run out of the back and drive down that 5 o'clock line. Drive down that uh, left sector line. And you can see here what happens. She continues to rotate, and we're not bringing the knee and the toe close enough together like a sprinter would as they were running. And what happens, you do see, look at that left foot. The left foot does slip a little bit. See how the left foot kind of slips? Boop. And I think that's because we're still thinking about getting your butt facing the throwing area. Your butt facing the official that might be standing out there. And see how this should be a run, but that right foot continues to swing around in this really big wide sweep. So I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather see that straight run down the middle. Right about here you want to start to run. So at this point I want to see that knee driving forward, the toe driving forward, and your knee and your your knees and your feet should be very very close together. So as you're driving, just like a sprinter, you're driving, you're running across that circle. One big explosive run instead of that big twist. Now as you land in the middle, you're doing a much better job. I believe, and again, it's been a few weeks, and I should have gone back and watched your original video, and I'm sorry that I didn't. Um, but I believe the original video, you were going over into the left half of the circle. That big sweep was causing you to over-rotate. So there has been a correction made there, which I think is very good. Um, now you're landing right in the middle of the circle, uh, and it looks like you are just inside the front half of the circle, which is really good. But the other thing that we're seeing here, too, is as you go through, watch where that left foot hits. So your left foot is coming down, instead of being back here on that sort of between 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock, and having a good heel-toe position, you're still a little bit backwards. You've got that kind of the opposite heel to the opposite toe. We want to see, leave that right foot where it is. That looks pretty good. I want to see your left toe in line with your right heel. So I want your foot to be right about here. 
not down there. And watch what happens. This is why it looks like you're falling. You can't get your hips all the way around. You're blocking yourself off still. So instead of getting the hips all the way around, watch the feet. Instead of getting the hips all the way around and down the middle, boom, you have to jump off the ground. Then you get your hips all the way around. But check this out. Look at where your feet are. So when the hips are all the way around, where are your feet? They're in a heel-toe position, exactly where they should be. So your body understands. Look at that. The next frame is pretty much in that heel-toe position. That left foot is exactly where I want it. So your body instinctively knows where those feet need to be. You're just putting it down a little bit too early. You're putting your feet down here where you should be putting your feet down here. You see that? So I think your body understands where that needs to be, but something is causing that left foot to come down a little bit too early. So let's try to diagnose what that is. That left foot coming down a little bit too early, I think just like instinctively you know where that left foot should go, I also think instinctively you can tell when you are being slow and when you need to speed things up. And this is what I mean. If you notice, because this right foot and this right leg does this wide sweep, your left foot is on the ground way too long. Imagine here. It would probably only be about two or three frames. If you were to run from right here, it would probably be only about two or three frames before this left foot came off the ground. And let's see how many it actually is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So instead of it being two or three frames, it's eight frames of this video. So that shows me that you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know what I really need to do? I need to get this left foot to the front of the circle as quickly as possible. And because there's no zero support, and because there's no run, your left foot doesn't come off the ground as early as it could, or as early as it should. And now you're thinking, oh my God, I've got to get my left foot down as quickly as possible. And now watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe nine. So there you go. You are trying to get that left foot down very quickly because it's coming out of the back of the circle very slowly. So if we can speed up the back of the circle, if we can get you to run down 5 o'clock, run down that left sector line, that's going to give you more time in the middle of that throw to get yourself set up in a better position and give you more time, allot you more time for that left foot to get down in the correct position. Because you understand the mechanics of the throw. You understand you have to be in a power position if you waited until this left foot got all the way down to 5 o'clock, it would take even longer for that left foot to get down. And what that means is that you would be wide open in your power position. But you're thinking, power position, my left foot's got to get down. I've got to keep my weight over my right, all that good stuff. And you're putting the left foot down a little bit too early. So how do we speed it up? We don't speed it up here. We speed it up here run across that circle. Don't do the big sweep and the big kind of wagon wheel thing that coaches used to talk about. Don't do that big wide sweep. Run, get this left foot off the back of the circle faster. That's going to get it down in the front of the circle in the correct spot even faster than you are right now, but it's going to be in the correct spot and that's going to speed up your throw. It's going to put more power into your throw it's going to have you in a better power position when you go to throw. You're going to be able to get your hips all the way around, applying more power. 
the discus is going to go straight down the middle instead of going down the right sector line like it does here. And overall, everything is going to be sped up and everything's going to look better. So that's the big thing. We can trace it back to this point right here. This point right here. You need to run. Run across that circle. Get the knees together. Get the feet together. Run just like a sprinter coming out of starting blocks. Run down that circle. Drive down that circle. And get the left foot down at 5 o'clock. All right, that's what I've got for you this week. Thank you again to everybody for uh, checking out the videos. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and leave your comment down below. Everybody who wants to send in a video, I appreciate it, but I am getting to these when I can. I do get your videos. I do get your emails, um, but you know, if you're sending five, six a day and I only do one or two a week, I may not get to yours right away. So be patient. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and uh, I will get to your email as soon as I possibly can.